Hush up for a second. Act professional. All right, what's up, YouTube? Um, we're going to do a Jake Channel video today. We're going to show you how to avoid stuff like this. Yes, this is on my own job by some of my higher paid employees. So they're going to be watching this video as soon as it's done as well. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> okay, as you just saw in that other video, even some good J channelers can have some bad habits. And that can that can cause that kind of thing to happen a lot. What is this? I'm going to show you guys that. See, I don't even I don't ever need to see that on my job site. You'll find out why weird stuff like this is not necessary. This is from whatever. Anyhow, um, so real quick, you're probably not going to want to use tape measures and stuff unless it's needed. Like for example, if I needed to get the side piece right now, it's a little hard to hold this up because the soffit. So you, you can use the tape measure for things like that. But people who um, take their tape out and pull all their numbers beforehand, they're probably going to be a little bit slower. And uh, we can actually challenge that towards the middle slash end of this video by, uh, I'm gonna do a uh, J channel challenge, okay? So stay tuned to find out what that is. Um, tools you'll need, you're gonna need a speed square for sure. Some snips, uh, I got I got my favorite right here. These are the little reds, the right handers. Uh, you can carry lefts on you too for a trick that I'll show you towards uh, probably on one of these other sides of the window. Um, you're gonna need a pencil for sure and uh, you're gonna want a knife with a straight blade, which mine's not on my pouch, it's right here. So you just need a knife with a straight blade in case once in a while uh, your cuts can get a little weird or uh, something won't fit and you might need to knife it depending on how the window is. And sometimes, like I had to knife all these windows off right here, these little corners, come over here, Ben. But you see, I got, I got this one pretty flat by knifing this off. These are brand new windows. But if you look really close at this one right up in there, you can kind of see it's got this lip it's got this lip on it okay now that that sometimes can mess with your j channel a little bit so you want to make sure that um first off you definitely want your windows flashed correctly and then you also want uh to make sure that they're pretty clean sometimes if you're doing a remodel on siding you're going to have nails sticking out and, and there's all kinds of stuff that can get in your way so let's get started real quick um so what we need to do is we need to figure out our first length okay so what i what this J channel is uh, close to an inch. I'm not actually sure what it really is. Seven eighths, maybe. It's an inch, okay? Which means you're gonna need that to, to uh, come around. So we wanna overhang at least an inch. Now, I always recommend having a little bit extra play. So if you wanna come show them exactly where I'm marking here. So I'm, I'll probably go maybe about, oops, maybe about right there, inch and a half or so past. And I'm gonna come over here now. I could mark this. I could mark this with my pencil, right? And just somewhere somewhere random where I know I've got enough play for this piece. But really what I'll usually do is I'll just come over here and I'll make a mark kind of like with my thumb. And I'll just go like that. You know, if you're uh, if you're into efficiency, it's one less movement taking that pencil from the ear, okay? So now that I've got this cut, um, I'm gonna uh, start with one, uh, one, one side. I usually just start with my left, okay? So we're gonna get that started. What we're actually doing here is we're going to run our run our snips down this edge for at least an inch, a little bit past, and then also down this edge. And they do make a good notching tool for this. I've never used, but, uh, you know, it's really expensive. It's like 40 bucks. I can get through that really quickly. It's not worth it for me to buy it. Uh, so uh, I'm never going to buy it. If you guys are really fast with it or whatever... Let me know if it's if it's worth a buy, but I don't I don't think it's gonna come down to it after you guys see this, you might agree. Come over on this side of the window here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line that up right there, okay? And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make a mark. Okay? And now I'm gonna cut that mark. And if you've got excess, like for example, if I didn't make a very good mark right there and I had a piece that was and I had a piece that was maybe this long, let's say twice the length, I probably would cut it down and take that little bit off and you'll probably end up seeing me have to do that somewhere else um, because this cut can be a little tough to make down a straight edge some snips will get they'll get a little rocked because of it so it'll start to throw your your snips one way or another so you don't want to have to come come down here and take this really big long straight line you're, you're better off just cutting a little bit off and then going about this now we're going to bend this this way and uh 
and we're just going to try to get to that line. We're going to get the tip of our snips in there. And you can do that with bigger Ooh, snips. Just a tip. It's just a tip. That's right, Matthew. Good Lord. So you can use uh, bigger snips like this too, but I prefer when I'm doing J-Channel, definitely just to roll with some little guys like this, okay? Now, when I put this up here, originally I put this side good and then I marked this side, okay? So what I'm going to do just to, just to kind of double check my mark, and I'm not going to take all day doing this. It's just a simple little mental note you can take, right? So you're going to come over here and you're going to put this mark exactly where it seems that you would want it, right? Flush with where your pencil mark was, okay? Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to check this. Go ahead and show them how that looks. And if it looks if it looks perfect, which it does, then you can go ahead with it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put one nail in the center and you have to maintain pressure. Just one nail in the center. A lot of people say not to drive this home. Make sure it can be it can be shifty too, so make sure you don't shift. That rolled, that nail rolled. So you gotta be careful with stuff like that. So if that happens, just pop it, do it again. I'm looking down and I can see it. Okay. There we go, that's a little better. Um, so you don't wanna overkill on nails, but you definitely wanna put enough in it. This one's bad. What'd you do, Matt? What, a collar? Keep in mind, you're going to have nails coming in over here, too. All right. This window has a little roll to it. As long as the plywood, you can handle it anymore. I don't think this is going to do this. Oh, no. I don't like that. I think it might be the nails not not driven enough behind here. Yeah, see? So, like I said before, you want to make sure that there's some nails that are clear. So these, Matt probably had his lackey out here. And didn't drive these nails all the way home, okay? So that's why my J channel was doing that. So that's important. Now, if we have that same issue, should be a little less severe. It's a lot better. Okay. Now, what I said was, we're going to have a piece coming around here, so this is already going to get nailed here, so I don't need to put nails. Really, realistically, I could just leave this one nail in there, but I like to uh, do a little bit. I like to make sure they're going to stay. And also, you're going to have utility strip getting nailed into here as well, under sill trim. So that's also going to resecure this bottom piece. You really don't have to go crazy on the bottom pieces, okay? Um, now, one trick I didn't show you, um, I'll show you right now. So, like I said, I might have to bust out my tape because the soffit's in the, air, in the way here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to burn a little more than an inch up there and come over here and just show them where this is. So it looks like about 49 right to my thing. You probably want two or three extra inches, so maybe 51, 50, 51 and a half or so, okay? You really want to... You really want to just kind of rough things because there's so much there's so much play in J, right? So we'll do 51 and a half, and I'll show you a nice little trick here to uh, to uh, not have to measure again, right? So I just cut that. You're just gonna cut this straight. You flap it down. These two sides are gonna be the same exact length. Okay. Now I can just cut that. Oh. Now I didn't have to measure twice. I got my cuts done. And now I've got both my side lengths. Now I'm gonna hold this up. I'm gonna go through this a lot faster in the second time, but for anybody who's day one beginner, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the extra, I'm gonna go the extra mile for you guys, okay? So I'm gonna hold this up and just kind of show you what you should be looking at, okay? So come see that. You want just a little more than an inch up there, okay? And probably a little closer to two inches down here. Alright. Now we're gonna have to put a 45 on this. 
I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this because I don't know if it has to do with me being right-handed or what, but I like to do this side first. Okay, so we got to put a 45 degree angle on this now. So what a lot of people are going to struggle with is they're going to do this. They're going to fumble their speed square around a whole bunch, right? So I don't really have a good way yet to remember this other than putting this uh, this flat part on this part is really uh, is always going to give you the correct 45 degree angle. Um, but I mean, you can maybe if you think about it, if you were to like stab yourself with a speed square, right? You probably want to stab yourself this way. You can only stab yourself this way. Not the sharp side, but the blunt side. If you were to stab yourself with the blunt side, that would be correct every time. So if I was to do this, like, okay, I'm going to stab myself with the blunt side, boom. Well, look, that's correct for that one now. So I've never thought of it that way, but if it helps somebody not fumble with their speed square, you're welcome. So what I'm doing here, come over here. Now we've left ourselves a little bit of play, right? An inch or two. So what I'm going to do is this this <laughs> length right here. Okay, that's roughly an inch. If I were to put my tape on it, this really does not matter. So don't don't get too crazy with it. I'm just showing you guys here. So that's that's about an inch. It's actually an inch and an eighth. Uh, you can go inch and a quarter or whatever. You just want a little bit of stuff uh, or a little bit of room to flap that down and uh, get a nail in there. Okay. So we've marked our 45 now. And again, if you pay attention to that, you'll usually not run. You'll usually not run out of space up here. Okay. Now I'm going to make this 45. I'm going to show you guys a trick to avoid. Um, a lot of times your corners will be just a, a little bit short from touching. Anybody who's done J Channel uh, will know will know what I'm talking about. This is kind of a little bit of an example. Not not really. It's kind of actually a pretty decent corner. But sometimes if you've got like that, you'll see a big you'll see like a square right there where uh, that's kind of open. All right, so here's one way to avoid that. When you go to cut this 45, you're gonna start right here as if you're about to cut, as if you're about to cut straight, right? Well, I want you to go inside of that cut a little bit, okay? Now you're, and you're gonna push back through. Push so you see, do you see what I did with my line there? How I started directly on the line and then I walked inside of it? What that's going to do is it's going to make your angle just a little bit longer and you won't you won't run short. And then I usually just kind of put my uh, finger there and go as straight as I can at that. And then I put my thumb deep in here and I always open this up. If you open this up, it won't get caught. It won't get caught on the back here. Okay? And it's going to it's really going to make for a much better corner. And then you just take this off okay? and there's really no art to this. This part will just get in the way if it's on. Okay, if that's on, you won't be able to fold this around to the inside. So take it off. And I always take it off back to this point where, um, like I said, you can really stretch that corner and be able to get right up inside of there. Okay. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and put this on right now. And you see I've got, got plenty up there. I can go ahead and mark this out. Okay, I've got plenty of space up there, more than an inch. Now what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to hold this tight, okay? And you're just going to mark this line here. You guys see that? All right. So then we're going to pull this down. When you cut this, you don't have this. You don't got to go up straight in the line. Okay, you can actually cut that loose there because you don't want this to get in your way. All right, can I help you, bud? Okay. All right, so that should fit. You want to make sure you remember to cut this before you uh, before you go up. Okay, so remember, same thing. This there's really only I didn't explain this earlier. There's really only two. When you're doing 40 uh, or a window, you're gonna have only two things. You're gonna have this cut here, which we did on these bottoms. And you're gonna have 45 degree cuts like the one I just did. It's pretty much the only two things you need to know. I basically taught you dang near everything you need to know for you to be able to figure it out already. That's how simple this process is, okay? Um, really what we're just showing at this point is uh, how, how to finish out the process so that there's no guessing for you guys. So we're gonna get in there. We're gonna cut right on that line. 
Sometimes it can get a little curvy in here and that might mess with your stuff a little. You can push that back down. All right, so we're gonna put this in here. We're gonna make sure that fits good. You see how that window, or how that turned out? Okay. And now I gave you guys a little bit extra on that point. Remember how I took a little bit out? So once in a while that can get a little long. This one I would say is not long, but if you wanted to, you could always come through and nip off a little bit of that corner. And that's gonna look a lot better with a little bit of a nip corner than you'll ever, than, than anybody would ever say with a corner like that, pretending that this was all flush here. That that would be a, uh, a lot worse than having a little bit of a nip corner, just so you guys know. So we're good up here. If we can reach it, go ahead and feel for it. And that's good now. So we just gotta nail this side off. Again, we will have another one wrapping around on top so we don't exactly have to waste our time putting a nail really close over there okay you don't got to overkill on these probably probably two two or three nails for a window this size um, down the edge uh, depends on sometimes your insides will try to push out here because the pressure on the corner and then you just put this up here yeah. Make sure that's in there good. See how that moved it a little? Nice little adjustment. And you're going to secure this. Now you're not going to, you don't want to destroy this, all right? You really don't. What you want is you want this little flap to hold this corner from trying to move outwards too much. You still want these to have a little play, but nothing serious. I would say tighter is almost better, but you don't want to breathe on the dang thing and let it crack, okay? Which, by the way, it is cold out, and I didn't talk about it yet, but sometimes when it's cold out, if uh, you're getting ready to cut a 45, it, it can crack the J channel really easily. So um, I've seen people try to grind 45s and stuff and all this in the winter, it's ridiculous. If you have a decent pair of snips, you can most likely get through it without it cracking. If it is cracking, you just have to give it a blow. And you don't need to sit there for three minutes blowing on one piece of J. Do like a, just like a scuba dive one. I'll demonstrate in an embarrassing way. <sighs> That's really almost all you have to do, okay? And then you'll be able to go about your 40, your 45s, which would, would yeah, realistically be that way. You should be able to go about that just fine, okay? So now, before we get to this, or before we go on, we just have to, uh, first thing we gotta do is we gotta put that speed square on, give ourselves a little more than an inch. Always start by making that angle first. Some people try to put this piece up here and go, oh, I got enough here, and I got enough here, and um, and they try to make marks here and here. Like, no, just put your 45 on already and go after it, okay? And remember, I'll show you guys again for anybody who might not have caught it. We're going to start right there, and we're going we're gonna to eat into that line a little, okay? And then we also want to eat into that back, too. We're going to go straight at it. We're gonna get our thumb in there and we're gonna open that that little mouth right there, okay? We're gonna open that up a little bit extra. We're gonna open that a little extra because that's gonna allow our corner to uh, sit as close as, as as we can get it. This little this little gap here needs to sit as close into this little gap here as possible. And it looks like this window might have got moved over a smidge. Looks okay. But for example, if this window was moved over you see this right here come come shine in on here that move that that window got moved in so you can kind of see a little bit of that i'm gonna show you guys what would happen if i went ahead and tried this right now so you can see what what flies and what doesn't so this is pretty much as tight as i'm gonna be able to get that get square with it down level and everything you can probably see the silver behind there silver taping in here okay so that probably would not be all right, so what I can do for that is you can take your knife and I got a weird, I got this double blade, but the one broke off. Otherwise, I'd have two straight blades in this because I'm doing siding and it would help me get in both sides here. But you can just push that into there. See the knife on the other side would be a lot better right now. And then put this into here and you don't want to overdo it. Okay, and then you could, you could just score this a couple times and this could come off. The snips will grip it. There we go. 
All right. So then you can fix stuff with the knife, all right? Just trying to show you guys all things here. So we need to put this on here. Make our mark here. Now we're gonna start to get a little more experienced, okay? We've done one side of a window. We know what we're doing, okay? So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna cut this out. We're not gonna waste too much time on it. We'll go right down our angle there. Open it up. Now we're gonna put this on. But we forgot a step, didn't we? Forgot to cut that, that's all right. We're gonna go ahead and nail this off anyway. Let me show you why. Look at this. Come check this out. I got right-handed snips. Take a little bit off that. Boom. She's good. Right? You could have uh, could have used greens for that side if you wanted to keep greens in your other hand or in your other side of your pouch. And then this one is kind of a little nippy. Boom. I actually haven't had to do that yet all day. And then, uh, all right, so now for the top. I can just, uh, this one's gonna have two flaps down on it, okay? So you're gonna need that, you know, closer to three inches on both sides. So I'll just cut one 42 and a half. Start with one, one of these angles, okay? And like I said, leave ourselves an inch and a quarter or so, somewhere in that range. Boom. And we're going to put our first 45 on. Don't be afraid. I'll say it every freaking time. Take out a little bit of the back of that, that 45. Go as straight as you can at this, but don't spend all day trying to make it straight. I put on 100 that weren't perfectly straight, and they all look crisp, I swear. So, yeah. <laughs> we've got our 145 on. So we're going to go right here. Now, you might have to get up here with me, Ben. So, what we're doing is we're going to secure this on there. Again, you'll get caught right here. You have to actually kind of force this one in. Get in the habit of doing that. All right. And then we have to come over to here. And we got to drop, drop that one in also. So, I had kind of a bad cut right here. I'm trying to get all... Trying to get all cocky on you guys. There we go. Okay. So, what we're gonna do here, this one's easy, all right? This is a simple one. We just mark, we just mark that with a pencil, right? So we've got our mark right there. Now this side is gonna be the one that gets a little bit trickier, right? So we want to make sure, you always want to double check everything. So we want to make sure that this is exactly where it's going to sit. So I, I push my fingers inside of here, inside of this J channel, and I make sure that's correct. Now I make sure this one's where it's going to sit. You don't want to over push either because these J channels are naturally going to want to sit out a little more than you push in. We need to make a mark on that side up there, out there. We need to make a mark at where we feel the top is going to be. And we're talking about the top of this J channel right here. That's what I'm marking. You can mark again at the top here, but I always usually mark a little lower just so it reminds me to give give myself an angle here. Because again, we don't want this part blocking our corners from touching. All right, and you really want a sharp pencil for something like this. And you need to have a sharp mind too because you're just gonna make a little mark right there. Now, you have to do some compensation in your cutting. That's why I said you gotta have a sharp mind also. All right, so, so, um, yeah, let's get down to the light. So remember when I said if I've got a whole lot to deal with, um, I might cut a little extra off. So this is where my 45 is going to be. Okay, if you can't if you can't tell by what I was doing, my 45 is going to go this direction. All right. So I just need, like I said, about two inches extra or so, one inch maybe from that line. I always do to make it a little easier to work with. 
you won't have a giant six inch flap trying to flap around going in there okay makes it real nice and clean now this this part's very important because when you when you make this cut you have to imagine this line here rolled all the way all the way through nice and straight to as far as the point where your snips are going to go so we're getting ready to snip on that now we need to be paying attention to the direction we're going we actually don't want to go on that outside of every angle like i said because this this mark is going to give you almost that exact mark already so if you're going to do anything it should be either touching this mark exactly back here or just just a touch inwards of it all right so we're going to make this 45 from right on that point see if you guys can see that okay right on that point and we're going to run it to the back of this okay now we're just going to run our snips straight at it again just like we always have open this thing nice and wide Take out, take out the back so we're not suffering trying to get her in there and then that should fit just just fine now we're gonna go up here and uh, let's knock out the easy one we're gonna go at an angle here and then right to that mark and usually I'll leave a little bit of that pencil line um, because it's better to be long than short I, again I would rather have to hit nip that off one little time than to uh, then for it to be short and the corner's not exactly touching, okay? So now I'm just gonna come over here and do the same thing. You guys have seen this. We're gonna put this corner on. Pretty crisp. Same thing here. Pretty crisp. Little pencil marks for me doing some extra stuff for you guys. Might be able to get them off. Oh, or just make it dirtier. Whatever my fingers do. We'll wash that off a little later though. But you guys, I really wanted to make some extra marks for you guys to really understand that. Because this is the part that everybody's going to screw up. And I can't tell you how many minutes I wasted trying or not knowing what I was doing and trying to figure this out for myself a long, long time ago. Because I never had a teacher to teach me this kind of thing. And uh, it's a big reason why I'm making this video here, okay? And all the videos on my channel, really. You know, so my, my guys can come watch this video. I always put these little flaps in first. My guys can come watch this video and uh, if you're an employer your employees can come watch this video if this does if this uh, video sits right with you might help you out save you a little time save you teaching time save them on the learning curve not bad okay all right now how long did that take how long did that take 28 minutes 28 that's how long the video is right okay. now all right so i'm just gonna start with some little pieces here and i'm gonna show you guys what this should look like in real time now okay all right, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say much, just because this is gonna I'm gonna turn this into a challenge now because J Channel and Window shouldn't take 28 minutes, it shouldn't take 15. You should be putting up, you know, windows because regardless of size, windows are usually just or they're just four sides, right? Windows or small windows, big windows, they're all the same amount of sides, so it's the same amount of cuts. The length of the of the side or the bottom doesn't really matter, so. I think we can do a window challenge for J Channel, and let's see, just like I did for my uh, one square challenge in roofing, and you know, let's kind of get an idea here of uh, the best and the fastest ways to do this, because you know, a lot of this stuff I figured out by myself, very little teaching, um, and I've taken a few of these tricks that you'll probably see me do, and I may have already done a little bit of. Um, I've taken them from either employees or just, I don't know, it, some boss has taught me some stuff, but. Um, I've taken a little bit from what I've had, and this is what I've come up with, and I just love seeing what other people come up with, and how, how they were taught and how they've learned. So let's go ahead and start this, and let's see who else is real good out there. Wow, okay. John, do you want to nail this one? Yeah, I can find around the nail. 
I didn't mention earlier, but on the bottom, because I didn't do this, your top one's going to be longer. Don't forget that. So if you're using this trick, make it a little longer. Okay. Don't count if it ain't quality. Thing I can save time on, and you think this wouldn't be the case if I was since I'm a roofer, but it would be uh, holding more nails at a time. I've never practiced shuffling single nails like this, only uh, cat nails I got real good at. This old tape's busted.
I don't know if I said it yet, but speed does not count without quality, so I don't want to hear anybody talking about it. I had somebody when I was making $12 an hour, $17 an hour guy, wanted to rent, or I told him I was better than him because I knew I was. We did a J channel race in front of the bosses. He put in half the nails, like he would have been like, that's good. I was nailing her off like this. I still beat him by like a minute. He was salty. And that's it. Let me show you how it turned out. Let me see the camera. All right, corners, underside. This side had a little, uh, there's this thing in here. I don't know if you can see it. Silicone on that window. Just so you guys know, but otherwise, that's how the, that corner turned out. This little pencil mark there. Good. That's how it should be. Uh, how long did that take? A little, just under 10 minutes. Just under 10 minutes? That's what you should expect for a window. Around 10, 10 minutes or so. So plan for that if you're ever bidding on siding. And uh, if you want to hold your guys to a standard. I mean, that's, that's a regular work pace right there, I feel. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something. Bye.